Welcome to the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission's website. I'm Chairman Phil Angelitas. And I'm Bill Thomas, Vice Chairman. The Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission is a bipartisan commission that has been given a critical nonpartisan mission to examine the causes of the financial and economic crisis that has gripped this country. I was happy and uh, proud to be named to something called the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission, FCIC, uh, that was appointed by Congress to tell the American people and to tell the President um, and tell Congress, of course, what the crisis had been caused by. Um, I thought, certainly, I would have an opportunity, really, to present my views and the information that I had about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and about U.S. government housing policy uh, to the Commission and have them take a look at it. We've been charged with conducting a full and fair investigation for you, uncovering the facts and providing an unbiased accounting of what brought our financial system and our economy to the brink of collapse. And then I was uh, invited to uh, meet with the Financial uh, Crisis Inquiry Commission, which was set up in, in early '09, And I started meeting with them, and uh, I had many, many meetings with them, and many hours of face-to-face, -face phone calls, uh, 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 submissions, etc. cetera. Uh, I would note two things. One is, every time I'd meet with someone who seemed to take an interest in anything I was doing, they'd either be fired or would leave. We will pursue the evidence wherever it leads and tell you what we find. In fact, I remember three occasions where I'd be working with somebody, they'd, they'd say, oh, I want to meet with you in two weeks, and then they'd go radio silence, and then I'd keep emailing them, and then finally I'd talk to somebody, oh yeah, he left three weeks ago. Uh, and that happened about three times. You might be watching this with some skepticism, wondering whether there is a real interest in getting to the bottom of what caused this financial crisis. That was a little strange. Uh, but the other thing that was strange uh, is that um, they, uh, Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission, uh, believed that, at least the staff believed, which really was the chairman, believed that the beginning of this crisis must date from 2004, not before. Um, certainly they didn't want to attribute anything to the government's involvement. That was not their charge. Their charge was to find out what had happened and how the private sector had nearly cratered the world's economy. That was their charge. We've been charged with conducting a full and fair investigation for you, uncovering the facts and providing an unbiased accounting of what brought our financial system and our economy to the brink of collapse. And they were not charged with, um, they, they did not look at what the role of the government was. And everything I wrote was a forensic study on how government policy led to and promoted the financial crisis and was the cause of the financial crisis. So that was a story they didn't particularly want to hear. In fact, at one point in a, in a very amusing uh, uh, situation, uh, they, they said, well, Ed, uh, we're interested in the triggers of the financial crisis. You're trying to tell us that something happened that happened in 1992 triggered something. That couldn't possibly be right. Um, you, you need to be talking about things in 04, 05. That, that, those would be triggers. But what this commission can do that Congress can't is to integrate all aspects of the crisis and present a clear, complete explanation. No boundaries. No boundaries means our investigation will proceed on the basis of fact and evidence and can move in directions that might constrain others. And I actually did my first memo that I did, a very long memo, was called, I, I said, well, I'll call it triggers, you know, triggers of the financial crisis. But then I went back and explained how things in the early 90s had led to uh, what had happened, this long fuse on uh, the big bang, the big collapse. And, um, and so then I finally got frustrated with that. And I said, this triggers thing is really not the right way of looking at this. I really have to phrase this as a forensic study analyzing the role that the government played in the financial crisis, because that's really what this is, is a forensic study. And so that's what I called it, and I submitted that to them. And again, I got push, a lot of pushback on, well, wait a minute, you know, back to 2004, you're talking about stuff before 2004 that couldn't possibly have anything to do with it. We will serve as proxies for the American people, asking on your behalf the questions you want and expect to be answered. No boundaries.
No boundaries means our investigation will proceed on the basis of fact and evidence and can move in directions that might constrain others. I had a lot of information available to me because I was fortunate enough to meet a colleague now at AEI by the name of Ed Pinto. And Ed had done a tremendous amount of research also on Fannie Mae. Actually, he had been in the housing business his entire career. Um, and then had gone out as kind of a consultant to the housing business and knew a lot about Fannie Mae because he had actually been one of the senior officers of Fannie Mae in the 1980s. He had been following what they had been doing all this time. And so Ed contacted me at one point and said, you know, we ought to talk because you're a member of this commission and I have an awful lot of information that even you may not know very much about and certainly he did. He had done a lot of research after the financial crisis on what Fannie and Freddie had done before the financial crisis. And so I asked him to write a report for the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission. And I would give it to the staff of the commission, give it to the commissioners, and presumably they would read it and um, they would be persuaded by some of the information that he had. We will seek the records we need from Wall Street, government agencies, and others. That isn't actually how it worked out. He wrote a report, and it was a really brilliant piece of work, um, about maybe 60 or 70 pages, fully footnoted. Um, everything that was in there was carefully um, backed up by data that he had developed or had in his files from the time he was at Fannie Mae. Um, Yet, when I furnished it to the Commission, they were not the least bit interested in it. We will pursue the evidence wherever it leads and tell you what we find. And instead of trying to find out whether this was an accurate report and, and trying to question Ed and me about our views, we will serve as proxies for the American people, asking on your behalf the questions you want and expect to be answered they immediately began to contradict the report and argue that it couldn't be true, it couldn't be the way uh, the financial crisis was caused. You might be watching this with some skepticism, wondering whether there is a real interest in getting to the bottom of what caused this financial crisis. So we went back and I asked Ed to write another report that would cover areas that hadn't, he hadn't covered in the first report, just in case maybe there was something that he should have covered that he didn't, and uh, he did, and I gave that to the commission. Um, unfortunately, uh, although the staff got those copies, and I offered at least the first report to the entire commission, no one seemed to have read it. But what this commission can do that Congress can't is to integrate all aspects of the crisis and present a clear, complete explanation no boundaries. Even the staff didn't seem to have read his report carefully enough to question him seriously about it. We will seek the records we need from Wall Street, government agencies and others. It seems to me that if anyone was really interested in the answer here, they would have called Ed Pinto before the full commission. So the ten of us, the six Democrats, the four Republicans, would have had an opportunity to hear his case no one else furnished anything like this degree of data to this group. We will pursue the evidence wherever it leads and tell you what we find. Now, there were probably 80 members of the staff of the FCIC, of this Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission. They were all directed by the chairman of the commission, Philip Angelides, who was a friend of Nancy Pelosi. Welcome to the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission's website. I'm Chairman Phil Angelitas. He had one time been the treasurer of California, and he was a, an important Democratic politico in California and a friend of Nancy Pelosi, and she was at that point the Speaker of the House. The Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission is a bipartisan commission that has been given a critical nonpartisan mission to examine the causes of the financial and economic crisis that has gripped this country and to report our findings to the Congress, the President, and most importantly to you, the American people. It was a government 
uh, supported, appointed, um, controlled effort to find out what actually caused the financial crisis. And yet there was no free interchange of ideas among us. I had a lot of data, a lot of interesting stuff about why Fannie and Freddie and government housing policy could be the cause of the crisis. You might be watching this with some skepticism, wondering whether there is a real interest in getting to the bottom of what caused this financial crisis. And yet, there was never a public hearing about it. There was never an effort to get more data to try to find out whether I really had some very unusual and, and useful things to add. We will seek the records we need from Wall Street, government agencies, and others. And so we, each of these meetings that we might have just ended with no action for the staff to follow up. But what this commission can do that Congress can't is to integrate all aspects of the crisis and present a clear, complete explanation. No boundaries. But the key point here, and this is something that the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission was not interested in hearing, never listened to, and that is that 76% of all of, of those 32 million subprime and other poor quality mortgages, 76% were on the books of government agencies, principally Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. No boundaries. No boundaries means our investigation will proceed on the basis of fact and evidence and can move in directions that might constrain others. There was really no debate at the, at the commission level of what happened in the financial crisis. And eight days before the report was supposed to be published, it was going to be given to a publisher and a commercial version of our report would be put out eight days before we got the final draft from the staff. And we will make our investigation and final report clear and relevant in answering the concerns that you, the American people, want and deserve. Now, in most commission reports, you sit down with the draft and you go through it page by page. And people say, I don't agree with this wording, or I don't agree with that, or I do agree, or I think it should be another way. You might be watching this with some skepticism, wondering whether there is a real interest in getting to the bottom of what caused this financial crisis. The members of the commission should get together and write the report together. That isn't what happened with the FCIC. The report came to us eight days before it was to be published. It was 900 pages. We never sat down together to look at it. Um, we could go through the 900 pages in those eight days if we had the time to do it and maybe made some written comments or something like that. But to find out what the other members thought and why they were right or why they were wrong, no idea. We've been charged with conducting a full and fair investigation for you, uncovering the facts and providing an unbiased accounting of what brought our financial system and our economy to the brink of collapse. As a result, as the report was being written, I decided it was clear that I was going to have to write a dissent because all of this information that was of such value, it seemed to me, in understanding what actually happened in the financial crisis was not going to be in the report. And we will make our investigation and final report clear and relevant in answering the concerns that you, the American people, want and deserve. What the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission said was that the financial crisis was caused by the private sector, by the banks and investment banks and mortgage originators and many others and left out almost entirely Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and government policy. The result of that is that that's the only story that the American people know today. We will serve as proxies for the American people, asking on your behalf the questions you want and expect to be answered. When the report was finished, the chairman of the commission um, 
who really was in charge of getting the whole thing done and directed the staff, the chairman of the commission decided that all of the dissents, if there were any dissents, would be only nine pages. The commission report itself was about 500 pages. And we will make our investigation and final report clear and relevant in answering the concerns that you, the American people, want and deserve. Meanwhile, the report, um, the commercial version, was sent out all over the country to bookstores and everyone who picked up a copy of the report in the commercial version and saw that there were dissents saw only nine pages of my dissent, which was 45 or 50 pages. But what this commission can do that Congress can't is to integrate all aspects of the crisis and present a clear, complete explanation. No boundaries. Again, every time somebody would get interested in talking about it uh, with me, they would leave. And that happened literally up until about a, a six or eight weeks before the final report was put to the printer. Uh, people were still, that I was meeting with, were still disappearing. And we will make our investigation and final report clear and relevant in answering the concerns that you, the American people, want and deserve. Again, it was a very strange uh, process. Uh, again, I attribute it to the fact that um, this was set up in this Alice in Wonderland uh, environment where Congress said, we've already decided what the causes were, hence Dodd-Frank, which of course had no mention of Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac in the entire statute of whatever hundreds of pages it was. Um, and um, the setup of the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission, which wasn't even supposed to submit its report until after Dodd-Frank was passed. You might be watching this with some skepticism, wondering whether there is a real interest in getting to the bottom of what caused this financial crisis. And you've probably heard that there are relevant congressional committees already moving forward within their particular jurisdictions with legislation to reform current policies and institute new regulation. So we had this crazy situation where the, uh, the, the um, Congress was saying, we've already figured out what happened uh, as uh, some eye, eye wash, we're gonna set up this commission, but they're not even gonna submit their report until after we pass Dodd-Frank because we already know what caused this. So the report was, in my view, a whitewash. It was, a, it was cooked up from the beginning to make a central point, and that is that the government has to have more power in order to control the private sector. The government's policies were never discussed, not of interest. And so, of course, the American people now, not only because of this report, but because of what the government has been telling them ever since the financial crisis, believe that it was those other guys, the banks, and the and the originators of mortgages and all these other folks who actually caused the crisis. We will pursue the evidence wherever it leads and tell you what we find. Turns out Congress didn't know what caused it. They were you know, wrong and the housing market hasn't responded properly since because they didn't diagnose what happened. It is our hope that together we can rebuild the American people's belief in a financial system that puts Americans to work, fulfills their dreams, and provides the foundation for a new era a broadly shared prosperity. And we're still living with the failures of that Congress in rushing to judgment for the wrong reasons and putting the wrong reasons behind what happened. We've been charged with conducting a full and fair investigation for you, uncovering the facts and providing an unbiased accounting of what brought our financial system and our economy to the brink of collapse. It's a challenge that is in many respects daunting and complex but at its core, simple and straightforward. The only thing that the American people really know about the financial crisis is what is in this FCIC report. And that is a false narrative. We look forward to being in touch with you and updating you on our progress at this location, fcic.gov. Thank you for now.